can't deny the milk. Welcome to episode two, Milk Stand Podcast. I'm your host, Ace. Jonathan. <laughs> What's going on, bro? How you feeling today? Chilling, man. Chilling, chilling, kid. Staying out the way, that's all. Good, good, good. How you, How'd you feel about the first episode? Fire. Very fire. Very fluent. Um, and that's been a general consensus. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. I'm good. Um happy. I'm feeling I'm feeling good. I'm happy. I'm just I'm loving life right now, man. Like it's dope, man. I made Me a great too. investment beginning of summertime purchasing a bike. Mm-hmm. That's all I do, bro. You you already know. Like I already, we had this conversation. No, you, you know to, I keep missing the bike club, but I just been so swamped, bro. Yeah. I've been so swamped, man. And uh I'm trying to get it right though. I told you know I have a bike. Like we yeah, had this conversation. Like I just can't get to the bike shop. I'm just doing twelve thousand things right now. So Yeah, I feel you. I'm gonna catch up though. Yeah, Nick. Be out there, Rich. Be I, out I, there. I already know. Every, every day, Richie, like yo, boy, gotta get your fucking bike. <laughs> I'm like, yo, shut up, man. <laughs> so, but um, yo, so I lied to y'all last episode. I said what I said I was 167 pounds. Right. Yo, so ever since I started riding, I lost weight. I'm 158 pounds. Jesus Christ. Well, you got. I mean, it's cardio. Nah, yeah, definitely. But 158. I never. I can't remember the last time I was 158 pounds. As long as you feel good, do you feel good? You say nah, yeah, you I feel, feel good. Great. I right. feel good. I feel great. Um, my eating habits are the same. Um, I do need to pick up my eating habits a little bit. I need to eat a little bit more. What was um, what was the the term again? Plant based. Plant based focus. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and by the way, of course, right? I had somebody write under my comments. How you Jamaican and you a vegan? I said, see, see, see? see? you didn't listen. You clearly listened to the whole you podcast. See? I am not a vegan, once again. <laughs> you got the fancy. I'm plant-based focused. Plant-based focus. I'm plant that's based so focus. fufu shishi. Like, yeah, that's so. oh my God. So, and I, and I could still be Jamaican. I still eat jerk. I still eat curry, but I uh, jerk my lentils, and I have curry chickpeas and potatoes. Like, okay. Like, what's up? Like, who want problem? Like, like, I, <laughs> who want problems? Still, I still make uh, rasta pasta. What? Yeah, but I make vegan cheese out of it. Fire. No. Until you have it, it's, I, make, I make it from scratch out of cashew. Out of cashew. Cashew, cashew almond milk, uh, and thing called uh, nutritional yeast. That's fire. Yeah. That's fire. Yeah, and then it's another cheese I make. I make a nacho cheese out of um, carrots and potatoes. What? And it's good. You just saying it's good? Or it's really good? It's fire, bro. Okay. I'm Yo, not opposed. I know, I know a, a, a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm not eating that shit. Like, no, I know I'm hardcore opposed. like carnivores, they're like, I'm not eating that shit, I'm not doing that shit. Like, to each his own. Right. But, yeah, I just I just need to eat a little bit more because my weight is going down too fast. Because yeah. I just have that, I have that metabolism. Even right, though I'm right, in my right. 30s, I still have that metabolism. So why don't you just up your protein? No, yeah, that's what I'm going to so, do. like, do shakes and shit? Like- yeah, so I bought a vegan shake. Um, <laughs> it actually, not... <laughs> You know, this nigga, this vegan shit. Like. No, because, not. Nah, so the importance of vegan, so another reason why I have this plant-based focus uh, diet is because, like, people in my family are catching cancer, bro. Mm. Makes sense. Like, a, a lot of people that's probably watching, listening to this, watching this, or listening to this, y'all know, like, my uncle passed, Uncle Butch. He, mm-hmm. he passed from cancer. I have another uncle on my dad's side, his brother, he died from cancer. My grandfather had cancer, and he beat it twice. Mm. So I'm like, yeah, you got to get ahead of it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm eating, I'm eating, I'm eating what's best for my DNA, as per se, as I can say. Um, so that's that's another reason why, like, my health is important to me. Um, I don't, I don't want, I, I don't want to have the skinny legs and the pot belly like a lot of Jamaicans in my family. <laughs> Yo, why is that like a thing? That's like a thing. Eat mad jerk pork and oxtail, which is nothing wrong with jerk pork and oxtail. If you know, if I ever go back to Jamaica, which I will, like I'm not gonna lie, I will have some jerk pork because it, it runs through your body differently. Like that meat out there compared to here, yeah, it runs through your body. Differently. Yeah, of course. Like it, I can imagine it. Like I've I've eat I've literally eaten eating like curry goat. 
right after it had been killed, like 30 minutes right after it had been killed, and seen it being killed. Yo, can I be truthful with you? Yeah. I think that would be like a little too traumatic for me. And yeah. I don't know if I want to eat the goat. Bro. Like, like, I don't want to see it. Like, see, see, a vegan wouldn't even speak about this. Right, right, right. So I, I want people to understand, a vegan would I not even speak about what I'm thinking right now. I don't want to see the process, bro. Yeah, Yo, bro, kill it's it, kill that shit in the back. What the fuck? Kill it in the back. I seen it get hit no, in the head. Let's, what the and, fuck? And this is, this is, this is, this is some, yard, this is some yard shit. Like, this is some Jamaica in the bush yard Brody, shit. Brody, I'm cool. I don't even want to hear it. Listen, I don't even want to hear about it. One more, 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 more story. Oh it's, it's, it's not the brutal part. It's not the brutal part. So, my family, we used to go for Christmas every Christmas. Mm-hmm. I mean, we used to go to Jamaica for every Christmas. Sorry. And um, the night before we was about to kill the cow, the cow ran away. <laughs> I think he knew. He knew what time it was. He felt it. <laughs> he felt I'm going to die tomorrow. Let me get the fuck out of Dodge. But I don't, yo, listen, I don't, so getting hit in the head, then we eat it after? That's fucking savage to me. Like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to see it. Just bring it inside when that's, it's done. That's Cook. how, look, think about it. That's how people live back in the day. No, 100%. Listen, we are not back in the day, right? It is 2020. <laughs> Kill that shit outside. Cook it before I, I don't want to see no blood, nothing. Yo. That shit would turn me off completely. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't get turned off by it. My mom was that's like, "You saw that? You didn't get turned off by it." I'm like, "That's nah. crazy." And I was young when I when I first saw that. I was, correct me if I'm wrong. Kareem, Kareem would probably know, but I was like, paying like nine, ten years old when I saw that. Yeah, that's traumatic. I would have PTSD. Yeah, but I get it. Mm-hmm. Yo, oh my god, I'm so excited! NBA's back, bro. <laughs> right, right, and it's actually been decent basketball too. Uh. I'm looking at it from a coach's eye. Yes, decent. However, no. It's sl- sloppy. Of course. Like, this is, the scrimmages were very sloppy. And even, like, the first, like, the game on Thursday. Yeah. Like, I watched I watched both games. I watched the... Uh, the Portland game. The Utah. The Utah. Utah. Utah, New Orleans. Utah, Utah. Yeah, Utah, New Orleans. And then I watched um, the Lakers, Clippers. A lot of unnecessary turnovers. 1,000%. But Brody... Things ain't playing. Yeah, months. I know, like, I know, I know. And that's why I'm saying it's better basketball than I expected. Mm-hmm. Like I, I expected to be really shitty basketball. People getting blown out. It's actually been close games. Like it's been good. It's been good to watch. And I think that I've been waiting so long for this shit to come on. Yeah, they could have 94 turnovers apiece. <laughs> I'm glued. <laughs> I'm glued to the TV. Like I missed this shit, bro. I missed this shit. But um, I'm excited about it. Man. I'm excited about Portland. I'm excited about Portland. Yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of rooting for them, Me even too. though, even though I would like the Lakers to win. I'm, I, I, you know, yeah, you know, it's Todd. I'm on like yeah. that's home team. I want the Lakers to win, but I also want to see them in the first round too. I want to see a good series. I think if the Lakers play Memphis, they're gonna beat the shit out of Memphis. Hopefully, because and the reason why I say hopefully, they're not, in, in, they're not forcing their will on anybody. Like, Who the Lakers? Yeah, yeah. I think and, I think it turns and out I though. I think AD is the key. Like after seeing him play, like, cause is he a dog? That's all I keep asking. Is he a dog? That's like he has dog moments. So he's not a, my opinion. He has dog moments. Um, he, I was watching the game last night, uh, Saturday night, and he was like taking too much of a like you and LeBron can't take a back seat. You and LeBron can't chill. Yeah. The game started out a ten and zero run, bro. They're from up, um, they're losing to the Raptors. Like people sleep on the Raptors too. No, nah, they but. definitely do. Kyle Lowry is annoying, but you know why I say that? Because I play just like Kyle Lowry. That's a fact. Yo, Kyle Lowry is annoying, that bro. That is a <laughs> fact, actually. Like, I never thought about that. He's annoying, bro. I like him though. I don't. I've grown to like him. Yeah. I didn't like him before because he was shying away from the big moment so much. But I also realized last year he just can't be. A number one or one A, which was him and DeRozan. He's just not that guy. He needs a star in front of him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which is when Kawhi came, you see he got comfortable and he was bugging in the playoffs last year. And that was the time he usually folded. He looked really good last year in the playoffs. Yeah. But he, he played with comfort. Absolutely. A, a Absolutely. lot of players do better. When I say a lot of players, certain players play better with comfort. And that comfort could be a coach yelling at them, it could be the pressure. And All that. It, it, it's, 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 each player has a different comfort level. Right. He needed a Batman, a real Batman, because DeRozan wasn't it either. No. And I like DeRozan. Unfortunately. And he has, like, I always compare players to this because this, this, this was my guy, Rudy Gay, bro. DeRozan is in the Rudy Gay bracket. Yeah. 
talented. All the talented. All, all the talent has the body. But it just for some reason, just it just doesn't go there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and it, you can't teach that. Nah. Can't teach. You gotta have that. That's just natural shit. Yeah, and, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what his work ethic is like. I don't know what his mental is like. I think they're working hard, Brody. I just think, like you said, like, yeah, it's crazy. Take somebody, take somebody, for instance, like a, let's say a Rondo, right? Yeah. It's crazy because, yo, you know these niggas literally putting hours and hours and hours and hours in a gym, shooting. But they just can never shoot. But, like, but do they? I believe so. Rondo works hard. Because I know... There are some players who are very talented and don't fucking work. Oh, 1,000%. 1,000%. And we know personally. Oh, we know personally. <laughs> like, we know personally. Yo, speaking of knowing personally, just being talented, guess what I saw the other day? Who? Ray Arnold. I saw Ray Arnold the other day, bro. I haven't seen Ray Arnold in years. Do you know how good Ray Arnold was when he was young? I do. And we could just leave it at that. Okay. Because it's... God bless him, bro. Right, 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 right. I'm just telling y'all something. I thought it was really dope. It was cool. I just didn't see him years. I thought back, like, damn, we, we thought this thing was going to be the next one. Like, nah, yeah. He, he, so I put it in perspective, people. This dude, Ray Arnold, I'm talking about, he was like LeBron, son. Like, he right. was very young. He was good in football and basketball. Like, like super good. But, you know, the streets, the streets, Life. the streets get a hold of people. 100%. Yo, I was just talking to uh, someone yesterday. Matter of fact, I was talking to Fresco uh, from Stadium Goods. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout, shout to him. He's he's a yo. He's a great individual, bro. Like had a great conversation with him. We was talking basketball for like a, maybe like an hour and just life, like how basketball like compares to life. Yeah. Like yo, there's so many people that we know personally who were so talented and just fell by the waistline. And like, and I'm like, to a certain point, we can even speak to that because even us in high school, you and I. Right. Very talented. You had your issues in college. I had mine. Like it, it just happens. We get yeah. derailed. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's and that's something that that's. And I'm kind of grateful for it too because now to this day I use it as a tool to help me for my future endeavors. One thousand percent. And even where I am today, it helps me. One thousand percent. But to caveat off that, like. The thing is, it happens, right? But some people just never recover, bro. And that's the biggest thing. Like, life happens, shit happens every day to everybody. Like, but it's the recovery part. Like, there's people I've seen that was supposed to be, like, take for example, you remember Stymie? Mm-hmm. Yo, bro, Stymie was the next one. Like, there was no question in that. Like, and, um, Went to Juco, shit happened there, and just never recovered, bro. You know what I'm saying? Still my guess, good guy though. But you could just tell he just never was the same guy again. Mm-hmm. Like some people that it breaks things down mentally. Like that's the toughest part, bro. And I think that's what basketball actually taught us. And I use that in like, like you said, I use that in life too. Like trying to be mentally tough. Like I'm mentally tough, bro. I know that I got through this. I would have ran through a wall for what I loved. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Why can't I apply that to everything else? Yeah, that definitely that definitely helps. Like my uh, one of the, another guy that I speak to a lot, uh, he was like, "Yo, y'all basketball players mentally a little different than the uh, average human because of like you said us. Think about the things that we had to do every day, practicing every day, waking up nine six in the morning, traveling, like even in school, not being with the general population. Like it's a lot of sacrifices that we had to make. So we know right. what sacrifices. We know what not having is, 100%. but also having to bust your ass and grind things out. So it's like when tough times happen, I'm like, oh, I've been here before. And e- even me, be- when I became a, a college coach, um, one thing I learned from the head coach was like, yo, you have to learn to learn how to be. Um, being com- uncomfortable, be- being comfortable, uncomfortable. Like so, like and like when tough times happen, you know how to adjust. So you get like, all right, this is happening. All right, let me let, let me shift this way. Let me yeah. Like like that right there alone is something I already knew. And then another great gem that she gave me too was, don't come to me with your problems without any solutions. Mm. That's heavy though. 
It is. As 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 simple as a of a statement that is, that's heavy. Yeah. And I I, I carry that with me in life. People come to me like, yo, I need X, Y, and Z, and that. All right. So um, what are your ideas behind it? Well, I don't know. I was hoping that you as soon as someone says I was hoping that you would Dub. All right, bro. Yeah, call me when you Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Still though. Me being who I am, the kind person or the person who's willing to help, I still like, well, let me try to, again, like I said last episode, like, I, that's something I had to change, bro. Yeah. I had to change. That's part of, like, doing everything. Like, no, like, you have to, you have to figure it out. Right. I, like, and, <laughs> like, Kofi always gets on me, like, yo, everybody's not like you. Like, they can't just figure it out. And that's, that's another thing I've learned. Empathy. Mm. Like. Because everybody can't figure out. Everybody doesn't have the menta- mentality that we have. Everybody's not going to just say, you know, I'm going to pick myself up and I'm going to do this now. Yeah. Like, nah, some people, some people have a poor mindset. And, 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 and that's the toughest thing to change. Yeah, you could change. You could work out for six months, right? And change physically. You try to work on your mental Try to, because that's a key word here, right? Because working on your mental is the toughest shit in the world. Because you can't, it's really hard to just block shit out. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to just be like, damn, I don't even want to remember this anymore. Like, it's hard to do. So it's just like working out physically, but it's tenfold. <laughs> like, that much harder. You know what I'm saying? I was having a conversation with my guy, and um, he ended it like, yo, be water, bro. Just be water. I'm like, be water? What the fuck are you talking about? Like, I heard, I've been hearing that a lot lately. Be water. Somebody else said that. I heard right. Else He's that. just like, yo, just flow. It's going to flow. Like, It's going to flow the way it's supposed to. Be water. He said, like, yo, water can adapt. Water bends. Water shapes. All that. Like, Just be water, bro. I was like, wow. So I kind of tried to apply that. Like, all right, cool. You know what? I'm not going to let nobody get me my square. I'm not with the emotional shit right now. Like, I'm not... I can't continue to make decisions off of that. Like, just be water. So now I'm just kind of like, just you know what I'm saying? Just in the flow, like, cool. And things have been working out the way it's supposed to work out. It's, it's funny you say that. I always felt like you were like that, though. Yeah, I was. But, I mean, you got to understand, too, I'm human. You know what I'm saying? I'm old. You know me. Like you said, I'm, I'm an adapter to a fault. Like, <laughs> I may adapt to some bullshit that I'm not even supposed to be adapting to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I may adapt to some good things. So, and it's tough because, yo, bro, not, not, God forbid, I never want to do this, but I could literally live under that bridge over there. You know what I'm saying? And adapt to it. Nah, like, damn, I, I, I cool. Like, this is what it is right now. This is what it is. It's going to get better, <laughs> but this is just what it is right now. Like, that's what I'm saying to a fault. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like one of my favorite songs by the weekend, I'm not afraid of the fall. Right. I hit the ground before. Like, right. That's what he's, and, I guess that's a gift and a curse, like you said, to to a fault. Definitely a gift and a curse. Like Definitely. I've, <laughs> I remember not having a doll to my name. You remember the summer twenty ten, bro? Oh my god. <laughs> we we didn't have any money, but that was the best summer, bro. Yo man. That was the best summer. <laughs> classic shit, like classic classic shit. R.I.P. to the four locals. <laughs> yo my what? <laughs> yo. Yo, man, I don't know what the fuck they was putting in for. Yo, locals, hey, yo. I know AJ's watching this, yo, bro. You two, four you locals, two niggas. Bro. <laughs> you, oh, you two, you he's, two he, niggas. He subliminally put that on one of the phones. He was like, know, you two man. niggas. I already know. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a fool, yo. Like, but now, four locals, bro, I don't, yo, I don't know what they was putting in them shits. I don't know, yo. But, yo, there was nights. I had maybe, maybe, I don't even know if it was one of the best nights of my life because I don't fucking remember half the night. You understand what I'm saying? Like, literally, like, half the night, I'm, she's in bits and pieces. I'm, like, trying to piece them together. Like, your shit was crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Licking foreheads. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was about to say, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I lick somebody's face, yo. Oh, it's somebody's face, right? Yeah, it's lick somebody's face. Like, what type of creep shit was I on? What the fuck? Like, who am I? Like, <laughs> Like what? Yo, I end up bagging somebody's friend, and years later, I found out that was a friend. <laughs> yo, <boy. laughs> yo, it was wild. There's so many, and it's crazy because there's so many like tingles, like and like shit that tingle into each other. It's mad weird. It's mad weird. Classic shit though. 
Nah, yeah. Uh, like those summers, like summer, like the the summers of being like being in college, like those summers, like coming back home, especially us, like you know, we we was away from school, away from New York for school. So like when you came back, you just it it, it, it raises you a little bit, like you a little bit more, you feel you a little bit more um, mature. Because right. you're kind of living on your own. 100%. You left the nest. Yeah. And you know you're going, you know you don't have, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. So you fucking come home for two, three months, you're bugging, like, 100%. you know you're leaving. I miss that, though. Yeah. I know some, you know, college was, <laughs> college was a little rough. Off of my decisions, definitely self-inflicted. But uh, I wouldn't change it, but I do miss that part, like, you know what I'm saying? Being away, the camaraderie. Coming back home, that was cool. Mm, so, but uh, yeah, yo, bro, I shot a movie the other day. Uh. Yo, I, I was, I was going, I was gonna get I, there. You I, shot, you shot your, you, you styled it. I, I did the work. Did, did you shoot it? I didn't shoot it. Oh, before, before, before we go deep into the uh, you doing the movie, I saw y'all playing ball on set. You still got the, the Jimmy, bro. Oh, my shit's never going away. <laughs> But um, you, you want to know it's crazy, and it had to get warmed up. And this is basketball again, mental toughness. I got into something a couple weeks ago, and I think my wrist is like fractured. I ain't gonna hold you up, bro. I took you to that to boxing fight. class one time. You didn't know how to punch. Mm-hmm. Nah, bro, shit's doing. We don't even get into what the fuck happened. But my shit, I'm gonna show you a picture. My shit was wild swollen. Anyway, so um, at first I'm shooting my shit. I couldn't even really shoot, but then I got warmed up. My drilling started going. Yeah, so it's over. Uh, muscle over. memory. Muscle memory. That's all you need. That's all it was. But yeah. So um, this movie, what was this? Nigga movie, shooting movies. Oh, doing man. podcasts, shooting movies. I'm trying to do it all, big dog. No days off. Um, it was actually pretty dope. It was a fucking great experience. And yo, I swear to God, I got a newfound respect for actors and actresses. Jesus Christ. Like, yo, that shit is work, bro. And I had 25, 25 30 lines maybe. We still got more scenes to shoot. Um, but shout out to Joe V's, my brother. Uh, he produced it, wrote it, directed it. Money out of his own pocket, bro. Nice lot, very big budget, actually. So he's in PA. Um, yo, Brody, I don't be nervous about much. I played in front of thousands, performed in front of thousands. But yo, I got there. <sighs> I'm like this, yo, like fucking shaking. Like, I don't know why. Like, you I want to. your lines? Hell yeah. Yo, remember lines is tough as hell. A lot of people do it. But I got through it. Um movie's gonna be really dope. He's gonna be we're gonna be in post-production soon. But it was really cool. Really, really cool, bro. 20 yeah, they were shooting for 21, 22 hours a day. For a week. So full day. For nine days, bro. Yo, it's crazy because I got there the last my scenes was the last three days. So I'm sleeping an hour, two hours, and what's crazy is you f- you're fucking taking fake naps, but you don't know when your time is coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you're not really. It, she was, yo, I was exhausted for three, four days straight after that. Like, shit was wild. So, let me tell you a funny story, though. No offense to the makeup artist, but she was there the whole, t- whole time, too, working. Yo, bro, I finally. So, now it's the last night. We got to be out by 10. It's like 5 30 in the morning. We finally about to do my scenes. We was trying to get the shit, my last scenes. We was trying to get the shit before the sun came up. So we rushing through the shit, getting through it, getting through it, getting through it. So I go do my, <laughs> I go do my makeup. Yo, bro, I looked like a black guy trying to play a white guy. Like, I don't know if she was tired. Yo, I was eight, nine shades lighter than my fucking skin. My neck and everything else got big. Yo, I looked crazy. So I go, I go to Jovi and my man Trigger. I'm like, yo, bro, I look fucking nuts. Now, mind you, the makeup artist is Trigger's homie. So he don't want to tell me it looks like shit, asshole. So I'm like, yo, bro. I'm like, yo, bro. Like, I look crazy. He like, nah, you don't look crazy. This is look how I look on camera. I tell you, fuck, trigger. Fuck you, yo. You're lying. I wipe the shit off. I come back. He's like, nah, bro. You look fucking nuts. I was like, yo, you was gonna let me go on camera like that, you asshole. I'm like a vampire. Yeah? Nobody cared. I wiped the shit off and did the scene though. So I got through it. That was my first experience with a movie. It looked like it's still on your face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's your word. That's your fucking word. That was a good experience, though, bro. I think it's something that you will really enjoy, especially as you go um, into like styling. Uh, Misa Hilton, she was like the main. Her, Misa Hilton, Dapper Dan, 
damn, I forgot the other guy's name, but the designer for Pierre Moss. Okay. Um, and April Walker. They were like the main focus of the documentary, but it, it showed, but they spoke on like the history of like fashion and hip hop and like, so the title was called The Remix, like hip hop and fashion. Okay. And um, it touched on how like females in fashion, especially in hip hop, were kind of like unknown, but they were doing like a lot of the work. Like Misa Hilton, like she was a stylist for mad people, like Joe to see Little Kim. Mm. Uh, she did a lot of like she was behind like, a lot of the bad boy stuff and yo like even even recently something that you've seen yet you didn't know that I didn't know until I watched the documentary remember the uh, the I think it was the uh, ape shit video uh, Beyonce and Jay yeah remember Beyonce had that MCM shit on yeah she designed that bro what and she styled Beyonce for that that's fire well no Beyonce stylist called Misa Hilton cause she saw Miss Hilton post that um, because Big Daddy King had it on. And she said, y'all need that. And I need you to design me the corset for it. Mm. So she ended up designing a corset and it ended up being on Beyonce, bro. That's fire. So like, she's one of those people like unsung people um, in the industry behind fashion. And I'm like, yo, women, I love women from so many different angles and for so many different reasons. Fashion is just one of it, but like just being someone that you could work with being someone that could always uh, be there for an individual. And unfortunately, a lot of us black men, like, we don't big them up like that enough. And, like, and I really feel like I need to be one of the people that protects them. I agree. And, and I, I believe that I can be the person who starts that amongst my peers. And they be like, nah, Ace don't stand for that. Yeah. Or Ace, Ace is going to do X, Y, and Z when it comes to uh, women. Yeah. Because, like, even April Walker, like, she had Walker wear. Walk away was out back when Cock and I was out. Like she didn't let people know she owned the the, the clothing brand, bro. That's crazy. Because she's a black woman. No, she's black and she's a woman. So it's double, you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's 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 women go through so much. And especially being me being a mama's boy. You know you know what's so crazy? Um I'm agreeing with you. And um it's crazy because I've had I've had great experiences with women in the music industry, fashion industry, all these industries, entertainment, period. It's so crazy how, let's say a woman, let's say a Diddy, I'll just take a Diddy, for example, right? Your Diddy's a buy shit. Diddy could be an asshole, right? People know that. But not in a bad way, it's just they want to get his shit done. It's crazy because if a woman is like that, oh my gosh, she's a bitch, like, what the fuck? Why is she doing that? <laughs> Why is she like, like, nah, but he could do it, though. And that's the double standard about it, which is what you've been saying, protecting him, right? It's fucked up because they actually, some of them actually wear that on them, and you can just tell, you know what I'm saying? So you may think they have an attitude, but it's really them protecting themselves, bro. No, yeah, so it's like, just like a man being an asshole. A man being an asshole to protect themselves. Like, men? Like, men could be emotional, too, bro. 100%. Let's keep it real. 100%. Ego, like, bro, and women, sometimes they have to take... They feel they have to take that role of being a, a bitch, right? Yeah. To, to succeed, and like, and one of the women on the on documentary was like, how, it's three things that women have to look for when you're in this industry. Like, men want to fuck you, men want to fuck you over, and men want to get you the fuck out of the picture. Whew. Like those are the three things women have to like, look like pay attention to in the music fashion industry, and unfortunately, like a woman should just be. Like anybody in this world, a human being first. Everybody is a human being first. Yeah, but picture that. Picture that. Picture that. Men are savages, bro. Men, savages. Know that. A man with power, <laughs> times 1,000. It's just how it goes. It's fucked up, but it's. Yeah, cold it doesn't world. have to be that way. Just like they say. Just like when people when bad business when business goes bad, they're like, oh, that's business. It's not business. You already had it in your mind to fuck me over before the before we had business started. That's, a fact. that's one of the things I said to you. I said, yo, bro, I have no intentions of fucking you over in any business. Frank Sinatra and Quincy Jones never signed a contract. What? Always did business on handshake. Never fucked each other over. So you telling me people constantly want to fuck you over in business? 
And I'm just saying, that's just an example. People are going to be like, oh, well, that's just them. Like, at the end of the day, that's just them, but that, they're humans, yo. We're mm. all humans. Like, why do you feel the need to screw somebody over? Right. Like, why do you feel the need that because she's a woman, you have to take advantage of her? And now, yes, there are human instincts of a man when the, their lower head takes over. I get that. I'm a man. Like, it's, it's, it's happened. However, you have to, like, stay the course. You have to be disciplined. And why, and why don't men want to be disciplined? Don't know. It's a lot of... It's a lot of that was tough for me. Reason. That was tough for me at first. It what, was. To be disciplined? 100%. And uh, not just being in the industry and fucking just sleeping with people all over the place. Like, it, people I'm doing business with, like, that was tough at first. It's a new thing. It's like, damn, like, all right, cool. I'm in this industry. I'm hot a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm moving around a certain way. People are approaching me a little different. That shit is a little, it's hard to get used to a little bit. You got to really get your feet wet and be seasoned in it to be like, oh, nah, like, I know I'm doing business with her, I can't. You know what I'm saying? Let me not do that. Like, mm -hmm. beautiful woman, but I can't touch you. Like, things would never be the same. Women, women would say, yeah, okay, cool, we could be physical. Yeah, that's just it. That rarely happens, right? So then the emotions get involved and then business goes left. It's tough. Like it's, it's tough. Like I said, it's really tough to deal with at first sight. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm 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 leaning towards the side of like really protecting them and, and like not only protecting them, championing them too. Like, cause even like with the sneaker industry, or uh, like my love for sneakers, like I'm starting to see a lot. There's a lot of women out there who have love for shoes who's starting to get pushed to the forefront, and I love it. Like this. That's dope. This girl Brooklyn Betty on Instagram. You should follow her account. She's fire, bro. She's fire. Kicks, style, has her own style. Mm. Um, I, soon, we will, hopefully, we will have her on the show interview so you guys could know who exactly what I'm talking about. Like, yo, like, and I don't know, I just, I just want to, it's like something that's like brewing in me that just wants to like push them to the forefront, help them become, help women become as great as they can be. Mm. And you know, just and just the whole human race, but like especially especially black women, yeah. women too, and as a whole, but us as a whole as human human beings, like mankind, like we just need to do better, bro. I agree. And obviously, we start we start with just the human shit, cause black lives matter. <laughs> like it's just clear, it's clear. And then like the black women matter, bro, cause. What what they said? Black women is like the the least protected. I can see that. In the in the like, come I can on, see bro. that. That's not right. Like I, I had women in my family that I felt I had to protect against men in my family. All right, but you you on the right path. You started the conversation. You know what I'm saying? And that's where it begins. So if you start the conversation, maybe it picks up. Maybe the viewers. Maybe it's like, damn, maybe he's right. Shit. Maybe we do got to continue to push them forward. Because it's always different hearing it from somebody else. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So you on the right path. I haven't spoke out loud about it. Um, but that's something more so I want to do. And like, it's, it's, a, it's, so, it's, it's another reason I started this podcast too. Like, it's so much things I want to speak out about uh, that people who are on these platforms kind of don't speak about that much. Like, like yeah, it's it's cool to talk about the sports, the sneakers, but like, what about the people behind it? What about mm. the emotions behind it, the uh, responsibility behind it? Like, how can we maneuver that? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like one of the reasons why I removed myself from like the music industry is because I started to see like what power does to people. <laughs> like the smallest power. Like, why is the the biggest person? in the industry cooler than the person, the, the, the lower person. I ran, I ran into so many people who are basically, I don't know. I don't even know how to put it. Power's a drug, bro. And it's one it, of the it, most it really dangerous is. drugs, too. It's tough, man. And I was talking to my man about it. He's like, yo, you know what it is? You're sensitive. And I was like... Wow, I didn't I didn't look at it that way. That I am sensitive when it comes to like bullying or a sense of like over overuse of power. 
I'm very sensitive to it to the point where I do want to physically fight. Hmm. Like I want to stick up at people who've been bullied. I, I I've never been bullied. I always been the person that want to fight bullies. Hmm. Or like someone is clowning another person that can't defend themselves. Yeah. Like I I, I hate it. I dislike it. Hmm. I really disliked it. And that's one of the reasons, like, I feel like women are bullied. They've been bullied for so long, bro. I think it gets better, though. I think it gets better. Like I said, it's not even about, it's just about we're talking about it, not just you. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's different coming from you, and especially since you have a platform to really speak out about it. But I've been seeing it more often, actually more often than I've ever saw it. Mm -hmm. So at least it's being, it's being brought to the forefront. Like, yeah. And the Black Lives Matter movement helped that. So now you got these women that are pushing for these black men, asking a question like, all right, we pushing for y'all. Y'all going to push for us too? So it's kind of like a domino effect. Yeah, now people I'm, I'm, about it. I'm, I'm here. Like, I may not do it in the best way as yet, or I don't know. However, like you said, I'm, start, I'm speaking out on it. Right. And I want to do better. Because, yes, being a young college collegiate athlete I was I wasn't the best put it that way right but be, being an adult me having like a, a baby sister um having a, a another younger sister going to college becoming a woman not saying that was the only thing that got me changed my mind like no like I've always loved and cherished women again started from my mom like yeah your scope I, is different now though because you yeah. got people coming I, up I, under I, you. I, I always had it in me though because like the the like People used to call me Captain Savo. <laughs> like, yo. What? <laughs> now, I've, I've been called Captain Savo a few times. Not by y'all, anybody in our circle. Like, no, maybe like one or two. Because <laughs> it was a few times we would have conversations. And, and you know, I have a lot of female friends. And mm -hmm. a lot of my female friends, a lot of people want to penetrate. And like, every time I'd be like, yo, nah. Or like, I won't say nothing, or I'll just back away. And then like, I, I was oh, I called like, yo, bro, like, Holds over bros, but it's like not like yes, but no, bro. Like, cause she's a sis. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I under like, it, it's tough because me and you are brothers, right? Like me and you are very close, but it's tough like when that dynamic comes in place. It's like, I get it, I get I see both sides, man. I see it. However, like I need to protect this one. Like, let me just let me just protect this one, please. Let me protect this one. <laughs> and let me protect this one. You could like okay. I'm, and I'm not saying like Go savage and the others like everybody needs protection. However, I can't <laughs> protect everybody. Look but I will up. do my best to just like yo. yeah. You yo, you preaching to the choir. <laughs> You're preaching to the choir, bro. Like we've had this conversation. Yeah, I like, know. We've had we've had we've had this fucking conversation. So, but I get it. I don't. I respect it. Yo, if if you can, if you can save. <laughs> If you could save somebody from a person that you don't feel is going to be doing the right thing for them, that's cool. I respect that. Niggas don't want to hear that, though. Niggas but do not want to hear that. I you know, know that. I know they don't. Niggas is like, nah, bro. Like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And you're not, why would you ever stop it? That's the question. You my guy? You my guy? Why would you ever try to stop that? That's, the, that's what niggas is thinking. Like, we not disrespecting you, but it's kind of like, yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, let her decide that. You feel me? I feel you. So I, I, I still I used to write music. I and I, I write poetry, stuff like that. And there's one thing that I wrote, and I wrote uh, far from a save a hoe. Some just don't know the right way to the road. Like a lot, a lot of females weren't taught. And sometimes I feel like, yo, you just don't know where you're going. Like, okay. Like and 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 sometimes. Us as males couldn't step in and be like, yo, like, nah, that's not, that's not what you should be doing. I get that. I get that. Um, and, enough, and again, it is not up to us 100% to save them, but to kind of protect them, son, like, to a certain, to a certain degree. Because some people just don't, some, some just don't want to be saved either. Um, yes. A lot of them don't want to be saved. And that's because they're scarred. And they're wearing some shit. They got some baggage, right? Yeah. Now, now, the question becomes, yo, do I want to fucking unpack your baggage? That's the question. 
Do I want to fucking, what you're wearing, do I want to wear it with you? So then you got to start trying to figure shit out. Like, is this person even worth that? Because what really fucking happens is, and it fucking sucks, yo, you do these things for this person and you feel like you're changing them, you feel like you're unpacking their luggage, right? Their baggage. And then shit goes left anyway. So now, I just did this. And what are you just going to take it to the next person? All right, so here's, here's my... I'm going to dissect that a little bit. Okay. Now that goes into personhood. An individual needs to love themselves and understand themselves to the best that they can while they're here on this earth. Okay. Right? It's not. I'm not saying it's your job or my job to teach somebody how to love themselves. I can show you these things, and if you choose to pick up what I'm putting down, then there we go. Like, because... Whatever it is that they're going through in life, to a certain degree, is their fault while it continues to happen. Right. It's their responsibility to get themselves out. Now, they may not know how to get themselves out. And certain individuals may come into their lives and say, look, you can try this. Or like, for example, another female come into their life and be like, hey, baby girl, you can try this because this worked for me and I'm going to show you these steps because I actually went through these steps. Because a lot of things, too, especially with younger generations, um, they want to see what you did besides just talking about it. Agreed. It's kind of like with sports, right? Like it's, it's hard to play for a coach that hasn't played the game, especially and hasn't played at a certain level either, right? So it's like just with life, too. Like, it's like another person, a person telling you, you should invest your money in this. Excuse me, um, how much? Like a, a CPA comes to you, and says, oh, I can help you invest a, f- a million dollars. All right, what's, your bi- what's the biggest account you ever uh, invested with? So you want to see the proof. The proof is I need the proof. I get that. I really do. I just feel like, yo, know, one of the worst feelings in the world is doing something for somebody that's not worthy of it. No, yeah. And, and, so, and I'm not saying... And I'm not, but you again, never know that, though. That's what I'm saying, though. You don't, you don't, you don't really know, but know you it see until it's done, 100%. But now I'm already invested. I'm already in it. I'm fucking tired. I just wasted a year. I'm you didn't time. waste a year. I don't like that word. No, so let me not say waste, for lack of a better term. But you know what I'm trying to say, right? So this time that we was dealing with each other, I felt like, damn, I could save this person. Or there's some things that she could change. Let me show her how to change it. You know what I'm saying? Because I did it this way. Or ah, ah, whatever. However I'm putting it, let me not say waste. But for that year's time, though, bro, I could have been putting this that same energy into something else, somebody else, and building something. Mm-hmm. You understand? I understand, but here's, here's, here's Anthony today that doesn't agree with that. Well, let me not say I don't agree with that. Let me. That was supposed to happen. That quote unquote wasting time, that was supposed to happen. That was either supposed to happen for you to learn something mm. or that individual to take. It could be something so small that they learn from that to help them. In somewhere in the future, because they'll probably be in a situation before, like, oh shit, I've been here before. This is why son left me. This is why homegirl left me mm. because I'm doing this. Okay. Oh, okay, I get it. Like that's what like people are like, oh, I wasted my time with this person. All this, like, no, you didn't. You learned. You learned something. You just have to. You have to be optimistic or see. Try to see life from a different vantage point and not think or see life from like. Negativity, a loss and a loss is a lesson. There's there's something, there's a gem, there's greatness in everything. That's why okay. details are so important. Okay. And that's and and again, and that's and that's just for me. A lot of people don't feel the way I feel, but I'm just voicing mine because like obviously you feel one way and I feel this. No, way. that's actually a great way to look at it though. I mean, because regardless, you don't really take a loss, like you said. So I'm I'm with that. Like I'm with it. Now to completely see it that way, it's tough. A t- again, mental toughness. 100%. Not easy. 100%. And how I especially, see things now. Especially when you're in it or, I mean, I'm not in it, but I'm just saying in general, like, especially if you're in it or fresh out of it, some shit, like, that's tough to see. Especially, like, like I said, this, this is shit invested. I don't give a fuck if it's money, feelings, like, that was invested. I can't, that time, time. I invested this time, though. Mm-hmm. Can never get that back. Right? 
Maybe a lesson came out of it. That's cool. Question is, is the lesson worth the time? That's the question. What yeah. means more? You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's that's where I'm at with it. But I see what you're saying though. I get it. Yeah. Like, like uh, a lot of books that I've read like has helped me a lot, like mentally and therapy. Uh, I've been going to therapy since. What should be pushed more to? No, yeah, I've been going to therapy. My mom died in 2011. Uh, two th- uh, two years later, I had like a bad panic attack, bro. Mm. Anxiety, panic attack. Like it's the worst feeling. I don't want anybody to ever feel like. I'll never forget, I was on the ground. I feel like someone was stepping on my chest. Wow. I thought I was going to die, bro. Mm. And I was just like, I was fighting this case too because my mom was like, she was killed in a car crash. Um, so I went to, I called my lawyer. I'm like, because he always asked me, like, you good? You good? You sure you good? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I'll never forget one day I went to, I was like, yo, bro, I need a therapist right now, today. So I said, I don't know if I can live here on earth much longer. Mm. Got me one therapist. Didn't work out. She said I was too complex. <laughs> Didn't what? Know I was complex. Wait, what? <laughs> yes. A therapist told you that? People, people feel to realize, like, your first therapist that you may have, you may not click with that person. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, therapy is bullshit, blah, blah, blah. Bro, like, your, ther- you may, your first therapist may not be the therapist for you, bro. Mm. She said I was too complex. Because of the, I was telling her some shit. Like, I just let it all out. And then the therapist, the next therapist that I got, I've been with him since 2013, mm. seven years. Bro, he's helped me, like, mentally so much, bro. Like, uh, one, one of my other boys, like, we, we used to meet before coronavirus, like, every week and just talk about it because he's in therapy too. Like, just meeting on the minds and, like, mm. sharpening, sharpening our shit. It's like, therapy helps you maneuver through life. Right. And they're not telling you exactly how to live life. You tell them what it is that you're going through, and, and you know you have different scenarios. And it's like, oh, have you ever tried this? Have you tried that? You're on the right path. You're getting better. There's peaks and valleys. Once you're depressed, it's always going to go up, down, up, down. But your your, uh, your valleys get sh- uh, shallow and shallow. They don't. They're not as deep as they used to be. Yeah. Which mine's is like mine's. They get they, they they're shallow. Like when I'm down, I don't stay down for long because now I have the tools yeah. to get myself up out of it. Yeah. And I'm able to communicate with people better. As you can tell, like yeah. I'm not that much of to myself anymore yeah. because I have the tools to be able to speak out and right. speak on things. Like I, I advise, especially if you're going through a tough time, like to speak to somebody. I don't have to be therapy, but speak to somebody. Get it out. I went to therapy a couple of times. Yeah. I was um <clears throat> I was dealing with somebody. And uh, I felt like she really fucking needed therapy. Like, I still do. But I felt like she really fucking needed therapy, like, really bad. She was a really, really bad communicator and dealt with depression. So um, what I did was, I was like, yo, look, go to therapy. Uh, uh, she wouldn't do it. So I took the initiative. I went. Like, yo, look, I'll go just to, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I went. I loved it. I loved that shit, like. And I also realized I had some Trauma. shit in my closet. Absolutely, some shit in my closet I wanted to talk about I didn't even know. I didn't go for, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't and like, anxiety. yo, fuck, like, I'm just, no, nah, it wasn't that. I just went to, you know what I'm saying? Like, actually push this person to go. She went once, she hated it, never went back, which was crazy, but I continued to go. And um, my therapist actually went on um, maternity leave and didn't, I just never went back. And I'm kind of tight with myself, I never went back because I should have. And I also think that, it's so frowned upon. I was literally in our community. I was hiding that shit. That was years ago before mental health, people was really talking about it. I was hiding that shit. Like, I felt weak, bro. Like, I loved it, but I didn't want to just come out and yell it to the world. It's like, you know, therapy? What the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a little more accepted now, apparently, because it's more widespread. But yeah, I was kind of like embarrassed behind that I shit. I remember the first time I told somebody uh, I go to therapy. That was, that was like, like you go to therapy, like, but it wasn't a judgment. It was like, oh my god, like, it was like a relief because they're like, oh, you go to therapy, like, oh, I wanted, to, I've been, I've been thinking about going too. How is it? Da, da, da. And my other friends like, I ain't going to therapy, and I was like, no, I'll try. And they tried it. They're like, I fucking hate it. They're giving me homework. I'm like, yo, bro, you gotta do the homework. 
Like that homework helps you. People don't want to do <laughs> shit, man. You didn't realize that? People want results and not to do shit. No, nah, it takes a while for to get results. Because, bro, I, for the first month, I was in there talking and crying to him about the same shit. <laughs> like, yo. So, like, it was bad, bro. Like, think about it. Like, and I was going through uh, grad school, too, while, like, mm-hmm. when I had that anxiety shit. All that. Like, with all this being said, man, it's just important to just love yourself. And we have to love others. Thank y'all again for listening and watching Milk Stand Podcast. I'm your host, Ace. Jonathan. And two things for certain. There's enough for everybody. And when you milk, you milk. You milk.